So today we're going to get bike nerdy and I'm going to share with you guys an alternative way to set up thumb shifters on your bike. I've been having a total blast with the hardtack and I've been moving components around until it reaches its final form. One change I did recently on this bike uh, just to make it slightly easier to get to the shifter is that I took what normally would be the left shifter, put it on the right side and mounted it upside down. I know I know that sounds really confusing. Let me show you on a different bike uh, what the end goal was. So this is the Rivendell Suzy Long Bolt. By the way, this method of setting up the shifter has generally been attributed to Rivendell. And what it does basically is instead of having the thumb shifter up here where you're shifting across the top of the lever, it places the shifter here. So really natural position with your hand. Uh, your hand is on the brake and on the shifter at the same time. One nice thing about this setup is you get a lot more leverage when you're pushing it against the rear derailleur. I know it looks a little confusing at first, but in actual use, it's really smooth. And once you get used to it, I much prefer it than having to go like this with my thumb rather than like pushing down and having kind of total control over everything. This is my Velo Orange Polyvalent, and I've also applied the same thing again with a Rivendell shifter. Super comfy position. It basically mimics uh, kind of what you would get with the modern trigger shifter where it's mounted below. In this situation, this is shifting to a harder gear, and this is shifting to a easier gear. One kind of real advantage of this setup is since you're running friction, on occasion, sometimes the friction of the shifter can be overcome wanting the rear derailleur to jump into a harder gear. When you have the shifter down here, and let's say you're standing and climbing, it's much easier to cover that gear with your thumb. So it won't accidentally slip on you if you're you know, standing and climbing and putting a lot of torque. Kind of protects you from that sudden shift into a harder gear if you have a non-rapid rise rear derailleur. So this is what it looks like currently on the hardtack. So again, this is the thumb shifter that would typically move a front derailleur, but instead it's on the right side and flipped upside down to activate uh, the rear derailleur. So as you can see, it's a pretty easy motion to go into a lower gear. To go into a harder gear, uh, you can pull at it like this. Instead of pushing with your thumb, you pull with your two fingers and this will move it into a harder gear for a non-rapid rise derailleur, and again, a lower gear like this. As you can see, when you're standing and climbing, uh, you can keep your thumb here just so it won't, just so the gears won't slip beneath you. There are a few downsides to doing this setup, however. If you take a look at a typical uh, thumb shifter designed for the rear derailleur, this one is made by MicroShift and it has a really long throw. So it will work with modern 11 and 12 speed derailleurs, things like SRAM Eagle, enough cable pull to drag a mountain bike derailleur all the way across a cassette. This is what would typically be the shifter for the front derailleur when you buy them uh, as a pair. And front derailleurs haven't seen a whole lot of evolution, so I don't think the cable pull has really changed since like the nine speed days. What I found with my experimentation so far is that you can get enough cable pull to shift a nine or 10 speed rear derailleur typically but not enough to shift a modern one by mountain bike cassette across the entire range. Okay, so for example, here on the Riv, this is an older Shimano XT, I believe for nine speed, and it's a rapid rise rear derailleur. This is my hardtack, again, a Dior uh, nine speed rear derailleur. And this is actually a 10 speed cassette, uh, 11 to 42. I just put this on yesterday. Prior to this, I had an 11 to 40 in 11 speeds, and that still worked great. It wasn't so much the number of cogs, but kind of the design of the derailleur that was limiting the front uh, shifter. This is my polyvalent and the front rib shifter has enough pull to work with the Advent X rear derailleur. Again, this is a 10 speed rear derailleur. A couple of other interesting challenges when you want to set uh, the shifter up like this is that typically speaking, it's a lot easier to buy just the right shifter. And the only way to get the left shifter to run it upside down is you have to get the pair. So if you're, if you're running a double, then that's great. But if you are doing it as just a one by, then it's, it kind of sucks because you have to get the double to get the left shifter to run upside down. In terms of what options you have out there, there's MicroShift, it works great. The left shifter in the uh, pair for MicroShift 
actually has a little micro ratchet in one direction. So it's actually a better friction shifter than its right shifter, if that makes sense. When you set the right shifter into friction, there's no ratchet. It's literally kind of the strength of the top cap compressing everything that creates that friction. Uh, but the front thumb shifter actually has a ratchet and works better and only in friction. Other options if you want to do a setup like this is, of course, Rivendell. They sell their silver shifters and those work great. I've not tried it with an Eagle rear derailleur. I know it works with the Advent X. I may put an Eagle rear derailleur on the polyvalent just to see if it'll pull it throughout the whole range. I suspect it won't, but if you guys have tried otherwise, let me know in the comments below. And, la and lastly, the other shifter I can think of the top of my head is those uh, any Cyclo Diacomp uh, thumb shifters. Um, those work great, but I don't know for sure if the left shifter has enough pull to pull like an Eagle rear derailleur. I tested those shifters on the Crest Lightning Bolt and they worked awesome in kind of regular mode. Really long levers, by the way, so you get a ton of leverage. I know what you're thinking, you know, is it worth the hassle? But when I first heard about it, it sounded like some just weird hipster thing to do. But, but after trying it with multiple bikes and setting it up on this bike, um, I think ergonomically it actually feels better. I feel like pushing your thumb down, you get more force and it puts less strain on your thumb. Also in this position, uh, your hand, your fingers generally have a better access to the brake. And like I said, you can also cover the shifter to prevent an accidental upshifter or downshift. Hopefully you found this video helpful and that you learned something new and interesting today. If you did, please consider supporting the channel by joining us on Patreon or by visiting our store and buying some stickers and some new bandanas and stuff. This channel has no major sponsorship. We, we rely on three things, Patreon, kind of sad ad sense that we get a month, as well as merch sales. There's no big corporation, you know, big friction isn't writing us a check every month to make these videos. So if you want to see more weird stuff that other bike channels won't cover, you know what to do. And as always, keep the supple side down.